welcome to creating screen capture videos with Camtasia 2 for Mac. This tutorial is an overview of the recording and editing process for creating screen captures. There are two ways to begin a recording in Camtasia. You can click the red record button at the bottom of the screen, or select new recording from the file menu. Once selected, the recording interface will open. Before recording, you will want to set the audio and video controls. The audio controller is the green button with a microphone. Notice the levels, represented by the grayish bar next to the button. To maximize audio quality, try to have the level reaching roughly 75%. If it is hitting the maximum, it will show red and may result in distortion. If you aren't recording audio, you can mute the microphone. For video, you can record using your webcam or record a screen capture. For screen captures, you can select the size of the capture area and the region of the screen you want to record. There are several preset options, and you can capture a custom size as well. For most applications, it is a good idea to use the 1080p HD size to optimize the capture quality. Once you've selected your settings, you can click the red button to begin recording. You will notice that the editing interface disappears during recording. Be sure to place the capture area so that it covers the area of the screen you want to record. This may require resizing your windows. Click on the recording window to move it into place. Once everything is set, click the red button to begin recording. You will get a three second countdown before the recording begins. Once the recording has started, you can stop, pause, or restart the process from the menu bar. For this demo, I'm going to demonstrate how to download Camtasia for Humboldt State staff and faculty. As you record, be deliberate with your mouse movements and navigation so that your viewers get a clear understanding of what you're doing and typing. You will want to rehearse this at least once. For this demo, I'm making a very short video, but generally, it is good to be short and get to the point. Most videos should be two to five minutes long. Once you are done, your recording will automatically open in the editing interface where you can preview it. One of the first things I like to do is separate the audio and video tracks, which will give you more flexibility with editing because you will be able to manipulate them separately. During the editing process, you can view the video a couple of different ways. You can drag the marker along the timeline to scroll manually through the video, or you can use the playback controls in the middle of the screen. You can also hit the spacebar to toggle between play and pause. The first thing I like to edit is the starting point. For this video, I made a few movements that don't need to be in the final project. To find a starting point, move the marker to the correct point in the timeline, and then mouse over the start of the video track until the cursor changes to an arrow with a flat line. Click the mouse and drag it to the marker. It will snap into place. Now drag the video track to the start of the timeline and preview your changes. You'll want to do the same for the end of your recording, choosing the best place to end your video. You can also edit out sections in the middle of your video. For example, when I was typing in the URL, I made a typo that I want to skip over. To do this, click on the video track and drag the marker to the beginning of the section you want to delete. Control click on the marker and select Split Selected at Playhead. This will slice the video track. Do the same with the endpoint of the section you want to delete. Now you have three sections of video. The middle portion is the section to delete. Click on it and press delete. Now, drag the last section to meet up with the first and preview your changes. This may take a little practice to get perfect. You can always drag the end of any section to extend it back to show deleted content. Once the video is split into two sections, it will be difficult to apply effects such as cursor visibility. To combine the two sections, command click them both and then control click to stitch the two sections into one. Once the video is the correct length and any errors are spliced out, we can start applying various effects. First, we'll apply a cursor effect to make the cursor movements and actions clear to viewers. Select the Cursor Highlight option by clicking on the button and dragging it into the video track. These effects will be applied to the entire track, which is why we spliced it all back together a moment ago. Now all cursor movements in the video will have this yellow highlight effect surrounding the cursor. The effect is customizable. Simply click on the arrow to show the effect in the track, and then control click to show properties. In the properties menu, you can change the color of the highlighting, the opacity, the size, and the blur. You can also change the cursor itself by clicking on the cursor in the properties menu. 
you can change the size and opacity of the cursor as well. I like to make the cursor just a little bit larger. I also like to add click effects so that viewers can tell when a mouse click has taken place. Select and drag the left click rings into the video track. When the mouse is clicked, red rings radiate out around the cursor. This effect can also be customized. The ring effect now also appears in the Properties menu. Aside from being able to change the color and size, you can also control the ring width and the duration of the effect. You can also choose to have the effect begin before or after the click. I like to disable this option so that the effect is less overwhelming and is more clear to the viewer. You can also add other click effects like ripples, scope, target, and warp. These effects can also be applied to right-click events. After setting all the cursor effects, we will look at the zoom animation, which will allow us to zoom in on selected areas of the screen for better visibility. I will use this to show what is being typed into the address bar of my video. Animations appear at specific points in the video, so I first will advance the video to the spot where I want to zoom, and then click on the Zoom In button, and drag it into the video track. An arrow appears on the track, signifying the start and end of the animation. A default zoom size will appear when the marker is at the end of the arrow where the red dot appears. Move the video into place, and then click on the arrow in the timeline to set the zoom to get it in as close as you'd like. Resetting the zoom will often require moving the screen back into place. Since the animation only zooms in, you will next want to set the zoom out effect. This process is basically the same, but the default zoom out will be the original screen size. You can adjust the placement of animations by dragging the arrow in the track. The last effect we'll look at is adding annotations. For this video, I want to draw the viewer's attention to the download links. My circular mouse movements fit with an annotation that creates on-screen drawings. Under the Annotations option, select the Circular Drawing option and drag it onto the screen. The drawing can be moved around, resized, and customized to fit your needs. Just as with the other effects, you can use the Properties menu to control the annotation effect. In the timeline, however, you'll see that a new track with a section for the annotation has appeared. You can drag and resize this section to customize the placing and duration of the annotation. I'm going to try to make it look like I drew the animation with the mouse. To achieve this, I need to time the start of the annotation as well as the speed of the drawing animation. I can control the speed of the drawing by clicking on and dragging the edge of the little yellow box within the annotation section. Once I have the first annotation set, I can simply copy and paste it to create a second, which appears on its own track. It is a bit confusing because the pasted annotation on the screen appears in the exact spot as the first. Just click on it to move it to its new location. Again, I'll adjust the placement and speed of the drawing animation to match the mouse movement. You can also control the duration of the annotations so that they disappear at the same time if you'd like. Next, I'm going to add some text annotations to the screen to highlight the hyperlinks. I'm going to select the arrow shape and drag it onto the screen just as with the circular drawings. The arrow can be resized and flipped. Simply double-click to change the text. Copy and paste to create a second. For this one, I'll change the text as well as the color of the arrow. Custom colors can be chosen by clicking on the round color swatch. Next, I will place the arrows on the timeline by dragging the marker and the sections. I also want to time the end of all four annotations to be a second or two before the end of the video. I can extend the last bit of video track and then adjust the duration of the four annotations to achieve this. Notice that the sections snap into place to allow for easy and accurate syncing of effects. I like to preview my changes after I've got them all set. All right, now I'm done with the video edits and we'll move on to the audio. The audio track shows the peaks and valleys of the audio to allow for quick visual identification of different areas in the track. Again, since I made some mistakes at the start of this video, I will want to adjust my audio track as well. I can split the track to edit out sections and then stitch it back together just as we did with the video track.
there are many options to add effects and clean up audio. These are added and customized just like the video options. One different feature is adding captions. Captions are very important for making your video usable for your audience. They are useful to people with auditory disabilities as well as for people who are using computers that don't have speakers. Once you've dragged the captions into the audio track, a new track at the top of the timeline will appear. This is the editing area for typing in the text of your audio. This area is broken down into sections by default, but they can be customized by dragging the vertical lines. A good rule of thumb is to break down the captions into two or three second chunks that start and end with the valleys when no words are spoken. You can see that when a section of the caption track is selected, the text field appears over the screen. Simply type into the text box. You can use the controls to hear just the audio in that one section. Repeat this for all sections. This is fairly easy for short videos, but can be very time-consuming for longer videos. Another option is to use the auto-generated YouTube captions, which can be edited for accuracy. The YouTube captions can then be exported if you want to use your video in other players. Let's speed up this section of the video while I finish the captions. Once completed, you can preview the captions along with the video before publishing. The captions themselves can be exported from Camtasia from the Share menu. They are saved in .srt format, which can be used with a variety of players, including YouTube. Next, let's look at publishing the video to YouTube, where it can be easily shared with others for free. Select YouTube from the Share menu and give your video a name. Don't worry! All of this information, including the name, can be changed later within YouTube. Frequently, the captions will not upload to YouTube properly, which is one reason why we exported them earlier. Once the video is loaded into YouTube, we can add them in later. When the video is finished uploading, you will get a URL and embed code. Let's copy the URL and view it in YouTube. Once logged into YouTube, you can view your videos by clicking on your icon and selecting Creator Studio. From there, you'll see all of your recent videos, or you can click on the Video Manager to view all of your projects. Click on the Edit button next to the video to make changes and add your captions. Choose the Subtitles and CC option to upload your captions. First, you'll be asked to select the language for your captions. Next, you can add captions by clicking the big blue bar and selecting the language. From here, you can upload the file that was exported from Camtasia earlier. Select the Subtitles File option, and then choose your file and click Upload. Once added, you will see the captions appear in the video timeline and in the right-hand menu where you can edit any errors. This is also where you can edit auto-generated captions if you've chosen that option instead of creating captions in Camtasia. To save the captions, click Publish. As always, it's a good idea to preview the captions to make sure it came out as you expected. Also note that since we chose the HD screen size when recording our video, that it can be viewed as HD within YouTube. This is important for producing sharp, high-quality videos. Lastly, be sure to fill out the title, description, and tags to make your video findable. You have the option to set your video to public or private and can set your license to allow others to copy and download. But this is all I'm going to cover in this tutorial. There are many great resources for learning more about Camtasia and YouTube that can be found within YouTube and with simple Google searches. Thank you for watching. I hope this was a useful introduction to using Camtasia 2 for Macs.